Yo, what's up, what's up, guys? Anthis is here with another Summer's War video, and today we are gonna talk about how to make your very first arena turn to cleave team. Now, there are a few reasons why you should be making a cleave team. Of course, you might have already a uh, illusion team composition that could um, sweep away almost everything. However, however, not everything. All right, and that's where a, a team to cleave team comes in handy. And uh, this especially helps when you are doing glory farming. I mean, there, there is a point in a, a Summer's War account or a Summer's War player's account or his career where he definitely needs to do glory farming. He needs massive amounts of glory points. For what you ask, is well to upgrade the glory buildings of course what else that's uh highly essential if you want to have a more competitive set of monsters for use everywhere because those towers take effect everywhere may it be uh, pve doing kairos dungeons doing a doa doing a arena offense and arena defense as well as in RTA and the wars so getting those glory points is something that each and every summer is going to do that is if he wants to play more competitively or if he wants his monsters to get stronger it's essential that those towers get maxed out and I know for a fact because I'm one of those guys who began farming using Lucians. However, while uh, as uh, Lucians, uh, as Lucian teams are farming, it will always come to a point where he can't hit something, something like uh, like this. Um, this composition is a Brian, a Chloe, a Rika, and a Veromos. All right. Now take into consideration that uh, this is quite tanky and with all the possibility if you are glory farming and you have did some hits already, chances are you're facing, uh, if you're at the peak of what you can uh, cleave with Lucians, chances are um, there are times that a Chloe could be faster than your Bernard and that's a problem. And. Uh, in order for uh, glory farming to be as efficient as possible, you want to hit everything on your list. You don't want to leave anything behind. Now, if, if you, and in, in addition, you want to do that in a very timely fashion. And that's where a turn to cleave team comes in. This team is something that you're going to use for those that cannot be illusionable. Uh, take for example defenses like uh, with with uh, Rakans and uh, all those fire fatty guys. Fire fatty guys. I should have someone draw that. Fire fatty guys. <laughs> all right, but enough about that. All right, now let's uh, talk about the essentials or the basics of what you want or how to build your very first turn to bleed team. Now, first and foremost, you want something that could do an AOE buff removal or an AOE buff strip. That's what you need because uh, chances are you'll be facing some lineups or arena defenses with Chloe and you want to take off that immunity and invincibility debuff. Now, I, uh, I got a chance to get a, uh, a Juno right here. Although uh, some will argue that she's the worst in uh, the Sisterhood of Oracles. And uh, frankly speaking, I kind of have to agree. Although there are very much numerous buff strippers that you can get out there. And if you are one of the few who are so, oh, so very unlucky, then for an arena turn to cleave team, there is always the Dark Homunculus where she does an AOE buff strip and uh, she does something like what Gianna does and then uh, that's awesome and it's obtainable everybody can get a dark homunculus you just have to be patient enough farming those 
materials. All right, and what's needed is you gotta take everybody, and in this case, we failed to remove that Rika. Um, on a on a side note, the Dark Homunculus has a higher chance of removing all those debuffs. All right. Next, <clears throat> the second requirement for your turn to cleave team is of course a galleon. If uh, if you have one, or if you don't have one yet, then save up those exclusive summon stones and use each and every one of them on the galleon rotation and pray to the gods of RNG. Give you a galleon. Alright, and you want to buff up each and every one in your team with attack and do a defense break. Okay, now. Requirement number three, although some may argue that this isn't really necessary, but uh, I myself want to have a secondary AOE Deathbreaker. In my case, I'm lucky enough to have pulled a Beth, which is, well, her third skill, Eternal Scar, does two things, or make that three, actually. First, it's an AOE Defense Break. Second, it's an AOE heal block. And third, it has a built-in destroy effect it, on top of the damage that it deals. And these deals a lot. However, if you don't have uh, a Beth, there's always a lure. I mean, you can ruin a lure with some attack, substats, and uh, he or she would be able to... No, lower is a he. He would be able to deal some significant amount of damage to take out or to lower down the target HP as well as securing that each and every one of the targets have a defense break, just like so. Okay, we failed to defense break that Brienne. And Veramos is on Nemesis. And of course, Last to move is your primary hitter or your heaviest of all hitters. Now, I uh, actually favor Alicia because uh, Frost Rush allows her to gain another turn if something dies. And uh, she has two AoE skills, so that is something awesome. Alright. However, all of these are uh, have substitutes. Take in consideration that Juno could be replaced by a Dark Homunculus. Um, Beth right here could be replaced by a Fire Homunculus or a Water Homunculus. Dep depends on uh, your taste. And Alicia here could be replaced by another, uh, another Elemental AoE or a whichever AoE monster or AoE nuker you have. It could be a, an Akamomir actually. It could be an. Uh, however, I, I favor Alicia because first she has two turn. Uh, she has two sets of uh, heavy nukes, heavy AOE nukes, and her third skill allows her to gain another turn um, if something dies. And last is because she has a 44% attack leader, something you want for a turn to team, turn to cleave team for your arena offense. Alright, so that does that. Next, let's talk about the rune requirements and the stats. First on the list is the speed requirement. I have here my second galleon right here. However, um, some say that uh, you should just stick to a uh, plus 60 or 160 or 170 uh, speed gap and uh, I myself like to go a little bit higher than that because um, <clears throat> what if those guys have like a, a, a 320 speed Orion and if you only, if you only have a uh, 160 uh, speed buff that Orion could move twice before you do so that's why I'd like to secure something uh, 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 a bit, just to make sure that an Orion wouldn't have two turns before me. 
Okay. And th that's why I stick with a plus 70, uh, a plus 69. All right. And, and that's cool. That's all right. That's all right. And my uh, buff stripper, my buff strip monster is... Juno is a little bit higher. Uh, Galleon is a, a plus... Whatchamacallit? How's this? A plus 177. Okay. Next is my... You want your Galleon to move right after Beth. your AoE stripper. She is a plus uh, a total of 175. And um, Alicia is a 1... 74. Now it's optimal if you have these speed tune to have only one speed differential amongst each and every one of them. That's optimal. However, well, if you don't have the exact runes to get there, then uh, a plus two or plus three differential wouldn't be uh, that bad. However, it's not optimal. So you gotta optimize a lot somewhere along the way. But if you're farming like C1 glory points, then a, a plus two or a, a plus three speed differential could somehow be negligible. All right. And if you might see, my first my uh, journal is ruined with will. All right. And pro tip, everybody needs will runes. And if possible, everybody needs to have shield runes too. That is if you got them. If you don't, it uh, you don't necessarily My Juno is need a total to have uh, everybody on uh, to have uh, shield runes, but uh, it would be optimal so that the stack of uh, shield runes there or shield effects right there is so thick that even if uh, the enemy defense gets to nook down on you, it could be just fine. Okay, so. Uh, my Juno here is on fight, focus, and will room. Because uh, she needs the accuracy. That's why I got will rooms right here. Okay. Next. Um, my Galleon. No, not this one. This Galleon. This Galleon has, it is the shield bearer. My Galleon is the shield bearer. And uh, his room quite tanky. Uh, total of uh, 30, uh, 35, 36,000 HP and uh, with some accuracy. I, I know for a fact that this accuracy is stat could, st could still be um, optimized to somewhere like 85 or something or so. And I really need that. And I'm actually looking for uh, accuracy subs right here for uh, all of these. I need more uh, gemstones, probably. Okay. Next, um, of course, your uh, two new girls standard. All right. They just need uh, will runes, of course. I got this one on the blade, 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 uh, blade, blade will. So she has a hundred percent crit rate. And my bet here is on, well, <laughs> will endure offset. Uh, although that it would be nicer if uh, I could replace these two with a shield set. I'm actually just looking for the exact shield rooms. All right, and that's that. So the turn order, of course, uh, this the buff remover goes first. So on my case, Juno goes first, and then followed by Galleon, and then Beth to secure that everybody has uh, defense breaks. And uh, Alicia goes in for the kill. And uh, that's how my um, Turn to Cleave team works. Um, on a different note, Turn to Cleave teams also have their weaknesses. Of course, there are, uh, turn there are arena defenses that a Turn to Cleave team cannot, um, would be uh, on a very bad position to hit. And uh, I think some of those are examples are right here yes yeah. all right something like this of course you you're going for a slow team and uh you're you'll be facing something this uh mola this is uh one of the uh, arena defenses that a turn to cleave team wouldn't want to hit 
because that molong is going to be faster than you and the chances are that molong is going to use its skill number two this dragon dance and <laughs> uh, I don't know if you experience it as much as I do but most of the time whenever molong does a dragon dance on uh, arena defense he strips everybody of the will of the will runes a will rune effect of the immunity and stuns everybody too and that's a pain and uh, when that happens your arena cleave team is dead right so this is the one of the most no-no to hit for an uh, turn to arena cleave team something with an aoe buff stripper and uh, the list goes uh, there's Molong, there's Tianlang, there's uh, even Chi Wu. Uh, especially if that Chi Wu has a 200 IQ. What else has any? Uh, like Praha. Um, what else? And of course, a Tiana that's uh, d clearly built up on speed. So you don't want to hit that with a turn to cleave team because Tiana goes first, of course, because your team is slow. She does an AoE strip most likely, and boom, easy peasy, you're dead. All right, that's a no-no for turn two cleave team. Another um, situational no-no is if uh, an uh, arena team is obvious to have nemesis runes, like Praha, like or even a Belladian with. Which is uh, which looks like obviously to have Nemesis runes on it, uh, on its offset because it can actually if it's rune fast enough it can actually cut in on your uh, second AOE nuker. However, in my case, I can somehow disregard such as uh, such defenses because it doesn't matter for me if they would heal if that Belladion would heal or that Ariel would heal. Because Beth is capable of casting Heal Block. How, uh, I consider myself lucky of being able to pull a Beth and uh, have a very nice turn to Arena Cleave team. Although it could still be better, I could always get a Tiana. I pray for myself getting a Molo or a Tiana. Somewhat, um, I badly want, I badly want a more reliable AoE buff removal. Tiana, please. Molo, please. I want one of those. I want one of those. I wouldn't turn down a Gianna or a, <laughs> or a Praha. I wouldn't turn any of those either. However, that's uh, that's just wishful thinking for me. Wishful thinking. All right. Um, I guess uh, that caps everything that I have to tell you about making your turn to Arena Cleave team. I hope you learned something or... I hope you uh, take into consideration doing what I have uh, discussed in this video today. And if you ever do that and uh, get some success out of it, don't forget to click on the subscribe button. I appreciate that. Show me some love. Up top, high five. <laughs> All right, visual high five. And as always, I'll see you guys on my next video. Anthony, this is out. What's up?